Hello everyone, my name is Pixelrifts and welcome back to the Minecraft Skyblock interlude to the Minecraft Survival Guide, I guess. This is kind of a permanent series now, thanks to you. I really appreciate the support on this series and I'm looking forward to doing a little bit more here in Skyblock. So today we're going to have, I think, three main objectives. The first one, of course, being to move the cobblestone generator. We're going to move this out to an area that is made primarily out of cobblestone so that we can have it away from the trees and away from our initial setup here. And so the crafting table doesn't keep setting itself on fire. A few people were worried about that, but let me assure you, the Wikipedia for Minecraft will tell you that crafting tables, while they can be burned by lava, they can set on fire thanks to lava, they are not flammable, which means the block will not actually be destroyed by the fire. The fire here has not been able to burn up the crafting table yet. The same also goes for the chest here, by the way, but if you ended up with, say, like a tree that overhung this area a little bit, it might potentially catch fire if a fire was set here by the lava next to the crafting table, so probably a good idea to get that sorted out while we still can. The second objective is going to be to start a larger scale farm than the one we currently have. I've gone over in the previous episodes how to generate dirt in this version of Skyblock because as we covered in a previous episode where we built the hostile mob spawner that is down there, zombies, thanks to a data pack in this version of Skyblock, can drop gravel, and gravel can be used in combination with dirt to make coarse dirt, which when hoed, turns back into regular dirt, and you basically spend two gravel to make two extra dirt, which is a really neat way of doing it. And once we've done that a few times, we will have enough dirt that we can set up a farming area. We now have an infinite water source so we can spread the water out, make sure all the farmland is hydrated, and that will allow us to farm some wheat and some more pumpkins and melons that we can eventually use for various things. The pumpkins and melons could go towards some form of food for us. We also have somewhere, I believe it's in this chest here, yes, we have some sugarcane that we need to grow as well. And with sugarcane, eggs, and pumpkins, you can make pumpkin pie, which is a pretty good food source. We also have the capacity to grow a bunch more melons, which we will need both for food and for potentially potion brewing at some point. And yes, potion brewing is next on the cards because one of our other objectives for today's episode is going to be to go to the nether. Now, there are a couple of ways of doing that. We have some obsidian in one of these chests. This one here, yes, because I left it in the chest with the other building blocks. The obsidian that we're provided with, 10 obsidian, is enough to make a portal to the nether. And the traditional way of lighting a portal to the nether in Skyblock is to line up a bunch of wood planks adjacent to the lava source where they can burn. And if they burn in a certain way, they can end up lighting a nether portal by setting a fire inside the ring of obsidian. However, as I've been mentioning, we can get gravel renewably in this version of Skyblock, and gravel has actually managed to yield us, wherever I can find it, there we go, one piece of flint. So by combining the flint and the iron we've been getting as a rare drop from zombies, we can also make ourselves, I think the iron is actually up here in this chest, we can make ourselves a flint flint and steel if we want to. So technically speaking, we could do it the ordinary Minecraft way and light the portal that way. However, I do kind of want to explain how the fire method works, how the, the lava method works for lighting a nether portal in case you guys are playing a different version of Skyblock where the gravel method isn't available or if you just fancy doing it the old school way. So we're going to do that in this episode to also preserve the amount of iron that we have because I've only got two right now and I would prefer not to spend that on a flint and steal if I could possibly help it. We also have started spawning passive mobs, which this sheep came up the uh, ladder here to remind me, and down there, oh boy, we have quite a lot of stuff going on. There are a few sheep, a few pigs, even a couple of horses down there now, all jostling for position on that grass platform. So that's a very good sign. That means we're going to be able to get some passive mobs on the go down there. We might set up a little farm for those today, but I think my priority is going to be making sure I get the uh, crop farm set up first because that's how we're going to be able to breed the sheep any cows that spawn down there and so on and so forth now this sheep is probably going to set itself on fire if it walks around up here for too much longer but i think what i'm going to do is take a slab out of here 
and at least put that over the top of the lava, meaning that the lava won't be able to escape anywhere. I'm not entirely certain if this will prevent fire from setting on any nearby wooden blocks, but it'll certainly make things a little bit less complicated for the time being. And so the first thing I'm going to do is take a bunch of this cobblestone and set up an area over here where we're going to permanently move the cobblestone generator. Now, if I remove a couple of blocks from out of here, I can at least start to build a decent floor for it. And some people might still be annoyed about the fact that I'm using full blocks instead of slabs to do this, where slabs could potentially double the amount of blocks I was able to build on by reducing the amount of cobblestone I'm using. And to be honest, we're producing cobblestone frequently enough that I really don't mind all that much. It's just a matter of grinding more blocks out of here. I understand that slabs are generally speaking the preferred way of doing stuff like this in skyblock but i'm not really that bothered about it there is the added benefit to slabs however that they do mob proof things if you're using the bottom half slabs here of course if you're using top half slabs like that you will actually be able to spawn mobs on this top block so that's not particularly effective mob proofing but here we do need to spend a little bit of time considering the mob proofing of this platform so i am going to space out a few torches around here just to make sure that we don't get stuff spawning here while i'm away and in this space over here, we're actually going to build a slightly different cobblestone generator that's going to allow us to produce two pieces of cobblestone at a time. Now, we're going to have to build this very carefully once again to make sure that we do not accidentally erase the lava source, which is our only source of lava in this entire world. So it's going to be paramount importance that we make sure that survives this process so what we're going to do is build up a structure over here which is going to have the lava source hidden at the top of it here and we're going to place a block there so that when the lava trickles down from the top spot here it's going to run out to either side and diagonally in front of that so above this block here we're going to be placing a water source that will flow down catch the lava that's flowing out from here on both sides and convert it into cobblestone, thus making sure that the lava source in here remains secure and does not get converted into obsidian, but that we get twice the cobblestone coming out one side and the other side. You could even open up the same spots on the opposite side here if you had more than one person playing in this world and you would get four times the amount of cobblestone. So we're going to add these little wings on the sides here so we can curve that around into a circle, making sure that there's just one spot there that we can place the lava and then the water is actually going to be placed one block above that so let me hop up here quickly and create another ring here which is where we're going to be placing the water so the water is going to flow down from this spot the lava is going to flow down from this spot we'll put a slab over the top of that to make sure that the lava is secure in there and isn't going to be affected by the water and the water is going to go there which is going to make sure that cobble appears here and here and naturally it would be better if the water didn't flow down off the platform so what we're going to do over here is create a little ring of slabs that's going to make sure we can stand within range of this cobblestone generator but still make sure that the water doesn't flow out of here and i guess i'll have to move a couple of the torches around just to make sure the area stays well lit i might actually place a torch up here as well because the lava is not going to be visible through that slab just got to make sure that this area stays lit up well enough and uh, i think that will do for now it's not particularly symmetrical but hey it'll do and we're going to place the water bucket in here like so and that should flow down nicely there we go let's fill in these back blocks here as well just to make sure that the lava doesn't have anywhere else to flow to and last of all let's grab the lava source from out of here grabbing that with the bucket that we've just freed up and let's place the lava source very carefully on that back block there and now that should start flowing down. It should flow out to either side, generating two blocks of cobblestone, which we can break like so and like so. And then the two cobblestone gets popped out by the next two generating behind it. So that is our cobblestone generator for the foreseeable future. We could potentially make another design at some point just to streamline this a little bit. We could potentially move this up a little bit so we can get closer to the two blocks we're supposed to mine. And I might redesign this in future just so the entire thing isn't built out of cobblestone. Using a different block type here, Will make it a little bit less confusing which blocks we have to mine and also could potentially prevent us from mining out the cobblestone behind each of these even putting some dirt behind there because you can't mine that quite so fast with a pickaxe might do the job for now and while this design isn't the most advanced thing in the world just being able to shift from left to right like this make sure you're always mining a block which means that you don't have as much wasted time as you do in the original cobblestone generator design waiting for the cobblestone to form again and we might lose
lose a little bit in the lava here and there, but we're certainly gathering a fair amount of it just by standing here and mining it one block at a time. And of course, the sheep has come to bathe in what it thinks is a new fountain, but I think that's probably going to do for the cobblestone generator for now. Like I said, we'll probably try and replace some of these blocks when we can, but in the meantime, let's get on and figure out where we're going to build our crop farm. I think as far as the crop farm goes, we are going to start with some slabs. It's going to make a little bit more sense to slab out a larger area here. So we're going to conserve the cobblestone as best we can by turning it all into slabs. We can always mine a little bit more if we need it. And I think using this bridge over here is going to be a good place to start because that will allow us a little bit more open space to work with and we'll build it adjacent to the cobblestone generator here just so it doesn't block any sunlight to anything a little bit further down in fact i think that there should just about clear the spawning platform we got for mobs so that should be fine i don't know if they need direct sky access in order to spawn i doubt they do but it's worth keeping in mind just in case so we're going to slab out a larger area around here and then we just build some dirt on top of that that we can start to turn into farmland remember this bridge here is built out of bottom half slabs so we don't need to worry about any mobs spawning here in the meantime and we're also close enough to the world spawn point that we shouldn't have to worry too much about that either i forget exactly what the range is but some people in the previous comments were telling me that it's actually not possible for mobs or at least hostile mobs to spawn that close to your spawn point they also said that phantoms don't spawn below sea level which is something that i'd forgotten i don't really deal with phantoms all that often but it's good to know at least that while we were down there in the lower areas of the world we weren't really susceptible to phantoms swooping out of the night and getting us it might be a worthwhile tactic to avoid phantoms in skyblock just to move down a few blocks so you're below sea level if you want to counteract the insomnia effect that way remember of course that once you come back above sea level that's when you are potentially going to encounter phantoms so just bear that in mind when you start your own playthrough and now this platform of slabs is ready to be converted into a bit of a crop farm we're going to take down the remainder of the area around this cobblestone generator and start to use some of the dirt here to duplicate with gravel so that we can get a whole bunch more dirt to fill out this platform so this little section of farmland is actually going to go away we have a few more wheat seeds though which is perfect got about 15 of those 18 now in there we've got some melon slices carrots and potatoes even that we can start to plant over there and thanks to the hostile mob spawner we have an almost limitless supply of bone meal that we can use so that's going to be absolutely perfect as well let's start out by breaking this though remember that this is kind of close to the edge right here so i'm trying to be as careful as i can in preserving the dirt but we don't have to worry too much about that now we have a ready supply of gravel in case you weren't paying attention in the last episode the trick to this is to combine the dirt and gravel here into coarse dirt, which I can do with five and five in a pattern like that. And we get 20 coarse dirt, which once we hoe it will turn into regular dirt. And all we need to do is go down and farm some more zombies in order to get a little bit more gravel. Now I'm gonna need to make another hoe for this. Thankfully I have a little bit more cobblestone here because that one has one durability left from all of the dirt that we made to make that hostile or passive mob rather spawning platform down there at the bottom of the world. So let's lay this out in the area we want our farmland to go. I'm gonna make sure to leave a gap around the edge of the platform here so that we can build some sort of perimeter just in case any of the passive mobs get over here and um, in fact so that I don't end up uh, falling off this thing we can lay a fence around the outside to make sure that we can uh, cordon off the area a little bit and prevent stuff from falling off. Hopping up here with a slab I can take the hoe to the rest of this coarse dirt transforming it all into dirt and then I can gather up a little bit more of this ready to combine it with gravel again and of course dirt can be hoed directly into farmland we don't have to worry about this converting into grass in the meantime so that should be just fine now let's see if we can rustle up a little bit more gravel down at the mob spawner and unless that's a very strangely patterned horse i'm pretty sure we have a cow which is a wonderful sight at long last we get ourselves a cow i think that's just the one cow though we will need more than that if we want to breed them but having cows spawning down here is going to be fantastic we will need those for some decent food production and a couple of other things unfortunately this cow is going to have to get out of the way so that i can hack at some of the mobs in this here spawner but these zombies will be perfect for dropping a little bit of extra gravel yep there we go got some already and hopefully that cow will stay out of harm's way in the meantime one thing i have been meaning to do something about is the spider problem because as you might hear if we get close to the top of the spawner there are a lot of spiders that seem to be all kind of like ganged up 
around here and I wonder if maybe we can open this up and do something about that. Okay, looks like the spiders have actually despawned, which is good news, but I'm going to add in an extra trap door in there as well, both to make sure that this is a flat surface so that hopefully the spiders won't cling to it for too long. They don't get stuck on the top of these trap doors here, but also because some folks have let me know that having bats in here is potentially a hazard to the turtle egg. Occasionally, if a bat will end up in there, it could potentially damage the turtle egg. And don't worry, folks, I do have a solution for getting the turtle egg back. That was something some, uh, some other folks were a little bit concerned about was that we had lost a turtle egg permanently there by not planting it in an area where it could hatch. Don't worry, I have some plans for that which will come into fruition in a future episode. But for now, I'm not too worried about the turtle egg. I think it'll be totally fine. I wasn't really planning on breeding turtles for this series anyway. It's probably a challenge somewhere in the achievement book though, so we shouldn't neglect that. But yeah, in theory, we don't need to worry too much about the turtles for the next little while. So let's pop the trap doors over the top of here like so, making sure that any spiders that spawn in here can't potentially get stuck on the top of there. They will still climb these walls but we're going to do something else about that a little bit later. So I managed to get myself a little bit more gravel, but it occurred to me while I was doing that that it's probably a good idea to start the process of lighting a nether portal now, because that's something that's going to take a little bit of time. And I can hear spiders and witches in the mob spawner. It takes a little time for them to filter down into the system, but eventually they will. Is that a sheep at the top of the ladder? It better be, because otherwise we have a mob incursion up here on the platform. I think, yep, no, that is the sheep. Okay, very good. <laughs> I was a little bit worried. I did light this up earlier to make sure that we didn't get any mob spawns on there while I was down here, because I don't know quite how far away from our starting spot we can really get before we end up with mob spawns happening naturally. So I'm going to grab a little bit more of this. We're going to turn this into coarse dirt, and we'll hoe that in just a second. But now, Oops, I think we lost one there. That is the first dirt we've lost, though, in this entire Skyblock playthrough, and since we are farming it here, it's not such a big deal. So what I think we're going to do is set up the chain of wood that it's going to take to light the nether portal coming off of the um, section over here where we have the lava in the cobblestone generator. So we're going to need a little bit more cobblestone for that so that we can have a platform to set the nether portal up on, but hopefully it's going to be relatively easy to do this. So I've got a few more slabs. We're going to go with bottom half slabs for this one just to make it a little bit more safe. And around the back of the cobblestone generator here, we're going to set up a little platform where our nether portal is going to be. And it's got to be relatively close to the lava source just so that the fire doesn't have to spread a super long distance before it ends up lighting up the nether portal. So I think we're going to have that set up here just above where the passive mob spawning platform is. Hopefully that won't be an issue. And we will need the obsidian from the chest that we started out with. So let me go and grab that real fast. Of course, right now we don't actually have any way of moving the obsidian once it has been placed. So we have to be a little bit careful about how we do this. We want to make sure that we end up with a pillar of three up the side here, come down and place another slab around here, and that's going to make the next pillar of three up the side here, and now we just need to place the last two obsidian in the frame like so, and that is our nether portal all set up. You don't have access to any other obsidian in the map unless you want to destroy a lava source, so better make sure you get this nether portal right first time. And so the next step is going to be to build a trail of wood coming from the lava source down to the nether portal so that the nether portal catches fire somewhere inside the frame on those two blocks there. And we've got a fair amount of wood already and plenty of wood coming from the tree farm, so I think we should be good to go here. All I'll need to do is hop up here with a couple of planks. I'll pop a slab there so I can start to jump up here. We will reveal the lava source underneath here, and the idea is that we're just going to place a little bit of wood so that it catches fire in a kind of chain coming down to the nether portal here. And I think what we'll do is place a couple of wood blocks behind the nether portal so that when the faces of the blocks catch fire here, in theory, that should be enough to light the frame here. All that needs to happen is that 
a fire needs to be set on one of those two blocks. So hopefully, if we build this right, we should be able to get that to catch fire without any problems. Of course, it is going to take a minute or two for these blocks to get set alight, which is why I wanted to start this off a little bit early so that we can get on with what we're doing over here with the coarse dirt, making sure that converts into dirt so we can work on the farm. And in the meantime, we will leave this set of wood to burn. So when we come back, we may have a fully lit nether portal without us really having to do very much. Of course, remember that this map has already given us flint and iron, so we can always make a flint and steel if this method doesn't work super well. But this is the quote unquote traditional method of doing this in Skyblocks, so I figured we might as well do it that way and save the iron ingot. I also managed to get an egg from a chicken down there, which I'm going to put in here. We might end up farming a few eggs in the near future. We might end up using them to make pumpkin pie and that kind of stuff. For now, I think I'm just going to grab the hoe out of here and we will continue setting up the farm. Another thing that's occurred to me while I was working down here is that if I want to get a few more passive mobs to spawn, a greater variety of passive mobs, I might as well start killing some of the ones that are down here on the platform already because this passive mob spawner is efficient enough that mobs will probably just regenerate down here in the near future. So I think I'll probably even take out some of the horses, much as the sound when you kill a horse is, yeah, kind of horrifying. I think I'll take out the sheep for now, the pigs and horses as well, and the rest of these will probably just end up respawning in the near future. Kind of wasting a couple of them by knocking them off the platform, but yeah, we got ourselves a little bit of mutton, a little bit of pork. That will be enough to start a nice little supply of food. And I'm going to leave the cows alive because cows are arguably one of the most useful in terms terms of food and in terms of the leather that they drop. So I'll work on that a little bit while I'm down here and hopefully with that platform being a good distance away we should start to see a few more passive mobs while I'm here working on the hostile mob spawner. We've already got two cows, one of which seems to have explored its way over here, so we could potentially start breeding those with the wheat I've been growing on the surface. The main thing being, of course, setting up a sustainable wheat farm so that we can continue growing that and continue breeding the cows once we have a decent population. So I've got a fair amount of mob farming to be doing so we can get ourselves a little bit more gravel and fill out that square of the farm. I'm going to go away and do that, and I'll see you guys on the other side. Oh, we have great news, my friends. Great, great news. I haven't been up to the portal to check whether that has set on fire yet, but we just got an iron ingot and a couple of redstone from a zombie and a witch, respectively, which means, added to the supplies we already have, we might be able to make our first automated cobblestone generator. So we can upgrade the cobblestone generator twice in one episode, which is going to be super great. And really, what you need is three redstone so that you can make a piston, a redstone torch, and have a dot of redstone left over. And using some of the technology we've been using in the regular Minecraft survival guide, we can actually start to create an automated cobblestone generator this way in our skyblock world, which is pretty exciting. <laughs> Getting the automation on the go is worthwhile early on. And now this section here, unfortunately, looks like it hasn't started to set on fire yet. I have had to rebuild this a couple of times because the wood up there would burn away and then the rest of it wouldn't catch fire. So there is probably a more efficient way of doing this, but I think I'm fine just letting it burn itself over there in the meantime. And considering that we just got another iron ingot, I'm not feeling quite so bad about the, po the concept of getting a flint and steel if this method ultimately feels like it takes too long. But that is really the only way of lighting a portal without a flint and steel, so I figure we might as well stick around and wait and see if it works. In the meantime, though, we have three iron ingots now, which would mean we could replace the bucket if we wanted to, but in this case, I'm actually going to make a piston out of it. Remember, for a piston, you need a handful of cobblestone, some of which I should have in here. You need a few wood planks. We just take three out of that, and when combined, we can make ourselves a piston. <laughs> we only need a regular piston, thankfully. A sticky piston is not required, so we don't need to go and fight the slimes just yet, but once we have figured out whether or not this is going to catch fire all the way down to the portal, which I hope it does on this next little run. There we go. We've got a little bit of it catching fire already, but has that just burned out? I have a feeling it has. Unfortunately, the fire doesn't like to spread all that much from there, so we can probably put a little bit more wood over there if we want to. But yeah, all we need to do is reassemble the cobblestone generator in a slightly different formation, and we can have the piston push the cobblestone out, meaning that we can harvest it safely without any loss. And our first lossless cobblestone generator here in Skyblock is going to be worth having at this stage of the game. So I'm looking forward to working on that towards the end of the episode. However, in the meantime, my priority 
priority is still getting the dirt set up over here so we can have a decent crop farm. So once again, I'm going to head away and continue with that, and I will see you guys on the other side. Well, not only has our nether portal finally lit and it took a little bit of breaking and replacing of the wood planks that we had going up to here for it to really catch fire, but we also got a visitor. <laughs> we have a zombie pigman who, if you're not familiar with the way zombie pigmen spawn, they actually spawn from the nether portal itself rather than walking in through from loaded chunks in the nether. I mean, sometimes they will do that too, of course, but... In the case of this one, it actually spawned from the lit nether portal blocks itself. So here it is. We have a zombie pig man here. And I'm going to leave him here for the time being, even though attacking this guy might lead us to getting a gold ingot or a gold nugget or two, maybe even the gold sword he is carrying. I'm not too worried about that, though. The main reason being, some of the armor we have been collecting from the mob spawner down there can actually be smelted into nuggets of gold or iron, and we can use that to assemble ingots of these materials, which means we don't really need to worry too much about zombie pigmen as long as we keep track of all the gold armor that's coming through from the spawner. However, that is a long and laborious process, so it's going to be a lot faster going through to the nether, which I believe is also a void world like the main skyblock area is here, and we're going to set up a really neat gold farm. Not only that, but a nether fortress will surely be present, meaning that we have access to with the skeletons and blazes and all of the stuff that typically spawns there, we should be able to make a go of it in a future episode. But I'm not going to do that today because I have a couple of other things in mind, primarily the setting up of a crop farm over here with which we can grow a ton of crops. Now, I've managed to fill out this platform so it's got a five block wide trench in the middle here. We might even fill that in a little bit here and there, but I think if I place a single water source here and allow it to flow out to the sides, and that's not going to fall through the bottom, even though there is a gap here that is a half block gap, thanks to the lower slabs that we're using there, we should now be able to hydrate most, if not all, of the farmland around the outside here. And we're probably going to have to find another way to light up this area, maybe with some jack-o'-lanterns over the top of it or something like that. But I think this is going to be adequate space to grow pumpkins, melons, wheat, carrots, and potatoes in alternating rows. As I mentioned in a previous episode of this series, crops typically grow a little bit faster if they are placed in alternating rows with other types of crop, meaning if we end up putting carrots, melons, pumpkins, and then potatoes there, then they're going to grow pretty quickly. Of course, we're going to need to make sure that the pumpkins and the melons have a space to grow out onto, so we're probably going to set up a row of solid dirt blocks along the outside just so that they have something to grow onto, and then the remaining rows on the inside are going to be carrots, uh, potatoes and wheat. So we're going to be able to grow those in order to breed some animals. And to be honest, we haven't really needed to breed animals all that much because look at the amount of cows we have down here on our passive mob spawning platform. That is genuinely fantastic. The last thing I wanted to do after we have started growing a few of these crops, of course, is to go ahead and redesign the cobblestone generator one more time using the piston that we have saved up in this box. And I have been grinding a little bit of cobblestone off camera, but the prospect of having an automated cobblestone generator is really quite exciting. And I think we're going to set it up in a similar kind of area, although this one will need a little bit of space around it so that the piston can push the cobblestone outwards. And of course, we could do a little bit more with that once we're able to craft more pistons, redstone torches, and so forth. But we will need one piston and two redstone dust because one of that is going to turn into a redstone torch. We'll need a few different components each time we want to move those things around a little bit. So let's start by planting the potatoes, the carrots, and the wheat. And let's grab some bones out of here because I'll be able to bone meal those nice and quickly to get ourselves a renewable supply of each of these crops. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas or rather cooking with potatoes, I suppose. We can make this whole row here out of potatoes. Let's make the next one out of carrots as well. And I'll come back through in a second and get rid of those torches so we can hoe the last little sections of the farmland here. But it's so nice being able to grow these things, finally putting all of those bones to use and we'll be able to use these to breed up some pigs if we want to. And that's a bit of a problem actually. We won't be able to make jack-o'-lanterns out of these pumpkins yet because pumpkins now need to be sheared in order to have the traditional pumpkin face and unfortunately 
crafting shears is going to take us to iron and I only have two iron left so I would rather save that for other things until we can work towards getting a more renewable supply of iron but instead I think what I'm going to do is pop a couple of cobblestone blocks over the top here and simply have those illuminated by torches like so the crops underneath should have no problem growing and remember this isn't any kind of like mob proofing step we don't need to worry too much about mob spawning on this platform because it is all farmland instead what we want to have happen here is for the crops to be illuminated at all times of day meaning they will even be able to grow during the night without adequate illumination crops simply aren't able to grow so it's kind of important to make sure that we keep all of this stuff lit up so with that in mind i think we are probably going to prioritize growing melons on this back row here although it will probably make more sense to alternate pumpkins and melons along the back row here i think i've only really got one set of pumpkin seeds whereas i've got a bunch of melon seeds so let's start growing those on the back row here alternate those a little bit maybe just fill in that last few sections with the melons they're going to be useful for potion brewing and as a food source of course although now i have an adequate supply of passive mobs spawning down there i am switching over to eating meat i have a ton of pork chops in here and raw chicken of course as well i haven't been slaughtering too many of the cows yet because i'm more interested in breeding those especially now we have a larger population growing up down there and considering that they don't need grass to renew wool or anything like that we can just continue breeding those up from the passive population we've got at the bottom of the world i could also start cooking potatoes to make baked potatoes if i was a little bit short on food but really we're doing quite well here i've got myself a little bit of wheat on the go so we can start to feed the animals and i think the transition has been made from the meager fair we started off with into a much more sustainable way of living. So as promised, the last thing I'm going to do is take down this cobblestone generator and re-engineer this thing one more time so we can have a more automated means of cobblestone production, or at least a little bit more organized and lossless way of making this cobblestone happen. So we've let the chicken out and uh, I'll throw the eggs in here. We've got a decent supply of eggs there as well if we want to make some pumpkin pie or something a little bit further down the line. Now I'm going to be careful to take this down without releasing the lava source that is contained inside of there or blocking it up in any way and instead I'm going to build out this platform a little bit further using these slabs so that we can set up a way for the water to run eight blocks. So what we want is for the cobblestone to be generated on a block let's say here allowing it to be pushed by a piston that's going to be set up behind it now the way we're going to do this is by the same method that we've been pushing around stuff in our zero tick farm except without the zero ticking component being present without that second piston allowing the piston to retract even faster so the way we're going to do this is by making a redstone torch like so we need a redstone torch a redstone dust and a piston to allow this cobblestone to move in an automated fashion now the piston is going to go there and we're going to place the redstone torch underneath here like so and then when a piece of cobblestone is generated here it's going to power this block that block is going to activate a redstone dust let's say here and another piece of cobblestone there is going to allow the piston to push the generated piece of cobblestone forward into the farm now of course water and lava are both going to displace redstone components if they flow down into that space so we're going to need to make sure that any cobblestone that gets generated here is generated by the lava last section of water that flows in this direction so the water can't flow down onto this block here and the lava is going to have to come from above meaning this has to be a bit of a precision operation i'm actually going to bridge out a little bit further in this direction going one two three four five like so and the water is going to be placed on the end of a row here that goes one two three four five six seven and eight and the water is going to be placed here we'll have a channel bringing it along here so that it ends on this block the flowing lava down here is going to create a piece of cobblestone there which is going to be pushed out towards our platform over there and that's going to allow us to harvest the cobblestone anytime we want to naturally we'll want to make sure that the lava source is placed one block above that area so that it doesn't end up coming into contact with the water and turning into obsidian so for the sake of our own safety i'm going to be placing it up here and we'll cap that off probably with a cobblestone slab once we are ready to place the lava source there we're going to do that last though the water source has to go in first because otherwise the lava source is going to drain into this area and is going to wash away all of the redstone components and make this area a lot more dangerous so to 
set up this water channel over here, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We're going to place a row along there. We'll need to do the same on the opposite side and place one block at the back here as well, making sure that the water has plenty of room to flow down this channel. So that right there is our water channel. I'm going to place the water source at the end here. It should flow eight blocks and stop one block before the piston head, making sure that it does not wash away the redstone components there. Right, now it is time once again to uncover the lava source at the back here pick that up in a bucket and we're going to place it in the top here and what should happen once we place that in there is that once it reaches that part yep it creates a piece of cobblestone and the cobblestone gets pushed out by the piston each time it gets generated up to a total of 13 pieces of cobblestone the 13th piece of course is going to generate in front of the piston head breaking the machine basically until that piece gets removed again but it's going to make sure the lava doesn't drip down any further and get destroyed by the water source or anything like that so this right here is our new cobblestone generator and then once the whole thing gets generated once we have 13 pieces of cobblestone of course we're going to break this all the way back to the piston head here and once we get to this point we remove that block and the entire thing starts again so this is now if we start breaking the pieces as they get generated over here a lossless cobblestone generator and if i wanted to grind some cobble all i would need to do would just be to stand at the end of the row here with my stone pickaxe and continuously mine until i've got as much cobblestone as i need so that's actually perfect for our needs here in skyblock it's going to mean that we don't lose any more cobblestone in lava and i gotta say this whole system is working pretty well although Frankly, it's a little bit ugly. So what I've been doing is smelting up some smooth stone in the furnace over here. Now that we've got a decent amount of tree farming on the go, we have adequate charcoal production. I can make a bunch of smooth stone and we can start to make this whole setup look a little bit prettier. Not to mention going to the nether in the next little while and seeing what we find there. But that's going to be it for this episode of the Skyblock Interlude to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I do hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please leave a like on it if you enjoy it. Keep the support up on this series. It's been fantastic so far. Long may it continue. My name has been Pixel Riffs. I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.